of revelation, not the Bible, question mark. Maybe he's not making a, a no, statement. No. He, I, may, I, I read it as though he was you know, yes. having to go at you. No, he's, he's asking the question because those verses come, uh, that verse comes at the end of the book of mm, Revelation. That's it. Therefore, is it just to add or take away from the book of Revelation or is it the Bible? Well, no, the book of, the, 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 it says about the prophecies in the book of Revelation and it also says about us receiving the plagues mentioned in the book of Revelation if we add or take away from the words of this book. What I was re relating to was the book of Mormon. Yes. That's right. what I was relating to. That is an add-on to the Bible. That's actually saying, well, okay, the Word of God is not sufficient. We need this as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to speak about the latter-day saints, the saints to come, and we need to speak about these things that were revealed to Joseph Smith. Could, could yeah. I just add something yeah, to that do. as well? S similar to that, whether it's Mormonism, whether it's there's yeah. even Christian spiritualism, spiritualists who feel they're Christians and that they are yes. in direct contact with mm. Christ as a spirit guide. It reminds me of the verse um, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 21. If someone preaches another Jesus Amen. or yes. another, if you receive a different spirit or a different gospel, you may well put up with that. And there's other verses as well. Even if an angel comes to you and tells yeah. you a different gospel or about a different Christ, don't mm. don't listen. It's two Corinthians that. eleven four actually. Two Corinthians yeah. yeah, so eleven four, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the the old business about add ons to the Christian faith. Surely if there were going to be add ons to the Christian faith, Jesus would have told us yeah. about them. Yes. Uh, the old argument about, you know, forgive me, I'm not having to go out now a Muslim saying that the Holy Spirit is the comforter and the comforter is Muhammad. The Bible doesn't say that. That's right. The, so, the, I mean, you know. other people can say it, but yes. if, we, if, if we accept the scriptures, it's not saying it. The other thing, we've got another course, so I'll just go to them, but the other thing that I always say is when the book of Revelation was written, which is supernatural book by, okay. by, by the... Nobody knew it was going to be the last book of the Bible. No. Um, and also those verses do come similarly in Deuteronomy. Yes. Um, and therefore, I, I think it's very clear. But no other book, you see, no, nothing else do we say in the Bible. That, that, that's only for that bit there. We take it as the whole Word of God. So to me, it, it, it is the whole Word of God. You know, I it's think it's very dodgy to start adding things onto Absolutely. the Bible. Absolutely, yeah. We, we, we mustn't add or take away from the Book of Revelation. No. We, we can do it anywhere else. I don't think that's what, 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 what the guy no, was saying, no. but I know some yeah. people would say that. Uh, Beryl, good afternoon, Beryl. Good afternoon, Doug. Hi there. We found your program very interesting. Thank you. But um, there seems to be one missing link. Um, you've not really mentioned the Holy Spirit uh -huh. um, this afternoon. You've talked about lots of other spirits, but the scripture does say quite clearly that, that we must be, receive the Holy Spirit. When you first believe, it says, have you, have you received the Holy Spirit? Yep. And if, if people um, haven't received the Holy Spirit, then these wrong spirits will continue dwelling in them because they can't... They, they, if Jesus is living within us, and once we're born again, once we've received his Holy Spirit, we have that power within us, and, and wrong spirits cannot dwell yes. with the Holy Spirit there. No, I, I, I think... I think we've said that to agree, maybe not quite in, in those terms, and, and, and I'll accept that. Um, but I think, I think the other thing to, to add on there, and, and, and you said it, Laura, when, when you receive Christ, and of course in receiving Christ it has to be a work of the Holy Spirit because there's no other way that Christ can come and, 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 and live within, um, that there was a measure of deliverance, but there were still other things that, 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 that needed to be done at a later date. And, and, and therefore, there, there was a, a progression that needed to take place sometimes in seeing uh, what God had done for you. Yeah, yeah. I, perhaps I forgot to mention that um, I did obviously receive the Holy Spirit and um, even with the signs accompanying speaking in tongues and that kind of thing, I just forgot to to mention that yeah. so definitely the yeah. Holy Spirit is yes. pivotal and yeah we wouldn't want to forget him at all <laughs> no <laughs> he, I mean he's part of the Godhead and you know you you, you cannot divorce him um, from uh, from what the Father and the Son are doing because he is the one it says in John's Gospel that takes of what the Father and Son says and, and reveals it to us yeah 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 
Bless you. Okay. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you, Beryl. Okay. Indeed. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um, hi, Doug and guest, uh, guests. Um, I've suffered nearly all my life with chronic anxiety. I'm very embarrassed to talk about things. I'm 45 years old. I feel my life is cursed uh, and passing me by. Can you help me, please? Your life doesn't necessarily uh, need to be cursed or is not cursed. Anxiety, many people suffer with anxiety, many successful people. People even in churches suffer with anxiety. I've suffered anxiety myself when I've gone to a meeting and 15 minutes after the start of the meeting there's no one there. You know, that's some things like that bring anxiety on. Anxiety is part of the fear that we have about our lives and you know, we can pray for these things, but please do not think that there's curses on your life because you feel anxious. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean there is. So please uh, look to pray for your fear and pray for your anxiety. And as the last caller said, invite the Holy Spirit in to deal with that problem. But please don't think you're cursed because you're going into areas which will naturally bring anxiety and fear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and. and if you need further help, please contact the office and get our details. Look on the website and get our details, and uh, and and we may be able to uh, to, to find somebody that could, could, can walk with you through these things. The, and and I I I know I'm going to upset some people, but then I spend most of my life doing that. So do um, but you know, sometimes God doesn't deliver us from something, but He delivers us in something yes yes exactly. and therefore even if god doesn't take away all of that personality that, that's anxious that but that which is excessive will be and and, and god will give grace to be yes. able to cope with the situation well the word of god said my grace is sufficient yeah. and his grace is sufficient uh, many many christians have underlying problems now people can think that maybe they're demon possessed because they have, have underlying problems. I've always found that's incorrect. Some people have problems because they have problems. And God gives them the grace to live their ordinary lives, worshiping the Lord and receiving God's blessings. Uh, but the grace is sufficient to see them through those problems. And mm -hmm. that's the best way I can explain it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is something which I know you, you, you have to, it's very real to you, isn't it? Um, you know, in, 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 in God giving you grace to live every day. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes we, we, we can get worried about areas in our life that we have still to overcome in Christ, and we can perhaps panic about them and really worry about them. But I think it's, it's key to also hold on to the fact that often, you know, the scripture does mention as well that, that Christ delivers us a bit at a time, mm -hmm. little by little, step by step. So we may not have a full um, healing or, or whatever you want to call it, a full liberty from anxiety straight away, but it could be something that will take a bit of time and will maybe even gradually improve as, mm -hmm. as time goes on and as Christ moves. So mm -hmm. it's not always an instant healing or an instant cure, but until that does happen, the grace is there for you. Amen. To and it's trusting him, isn't it? I, I mean, it really is trusting him that he knows what he's doing, he knows what's, and his grace is sufficient. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we trot that out because it's such a well-worn yes, phrase, yes. and we stick it on the wall and, you yes, know, we, yes. and gold lettering and all that. But the reality of that in our lives every day is so important, that what am I facing today? His grace is sufficient. Now, whether I know it or not is not the issue. He, at this point, his grace is sufficient, and he wants me to know it. I've always found that Sometimes Christians have a problem when bad things happen to them. Sometimes they think, well, I'm born again, that shouldn't happen to me. Uh, God's never promised us a rose garden. He's promised to be there with us, to lift us up, to carry us. Uh, it's a bit like the, the famous footsteps in the sand. That's right. That he was there all along. We just didn't feel his presence. So I believe that when we are born again and filled with the Spirit, God's presence is there with us. Sometimes he... He brings us up and toughens us up by just moving away from us a little bit. So we trust less in ourselves and more in him. Mm. Mm. Um, one final email, maybe, before I just share a little bit about uh, future programs. Uh, hi, Doug and guests. What about second-hand rings? Well, second-hand rings, 
uh, are a little bit difficult.